In our CNBC quarterly stock report, we asked respondents whether their clients were more likely to buy their first options contract, Bitcoin or SPAC in the new year. And 58 percent said Bitcoin. Bitcoin, in fact, rallying over the weekend and the Christmas holiday. But in this boom market, it is now facing a crackdown from regulators seeking to impose rules for crypto wallets and stable coins. Joining us now is Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire. Jeremy, great to have you with us. Thanks, Melissa. Great to be here. Uh, the proposals came out, I believe, on December 18th or thereabouts, uh, and yet we did see the record hit over the weekend. Joe, Mike, and I were talking uh, about the drivers of Bitcoin and the rally this time around, and I was wondering, what do you think it primarily is? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the drivers are things that we've all been talking about for a long time, which is that I think uh, uh, institutional capital, I think macro investors who are focused on uh, what is taking place with sovereign debt? What is taking place with the debasement of currencies? Uh, these are major considerations as people think about uh, new forms of stores of value. Uh, you know, people often make a reference to you know Bitcoin is eating market share from from gold, and you can see the charts and see how that looks. But but I think actually what we're seeing ultimately is is you know there's a hundred trillion dollars of sovereign debt, and one has to add, and that's denominated in fiat currencies and. Uh, one has to ask themselves uh, if those are the instruments uh, mm -hmm. for the next you know, 50 years. You mentioned the debasement of currencies, and that's one reason why the likes of a square and a microstrategy are moving their cash balances uh, to Bitcoin this year in, and in a very big way. Um, as the creator of a stable coin pegged to the U.S. dollar, Jeremy, where does that put the U.S. dollar coin if one of the reasons why Bitcoin is rallying is the dollar depreciating? Yeah, I mean, look, um, th th there's sort of, you know, investment assets and then there's, um, you know, transactional mediums. And our belief has always been that the predominant, uh, you know, reserve currencies uh, would best be represented as digital currencies, uh, fiat digital currencies. And that, uh, you know, for at least the foreseeable future, we're going to, you know, receive our salaries in, in fiat currencies and we'll buy cookies and milk and pay rent in those um, and so whether it's, uh, you know, something that's going to price a bond or is going to be used as uh, a day-to-day -day payment, um, we need these uh, traditional, you know, liabilities of central banks to be represented as digital currency forms. That's what's given birth to, uh, you know, stablecoin arrangements like USDC and Center, which, which governs it. Um, and those are exploding, right? Uh, USDC has grown like 600 percent this year. And, you know, we're in the very early stages. We expect ultimately there to be trillions of dollars of value in stable coins in the coming years. Is there any concern, Jeremy, that a stable coin's place in this ecosystem will be displaced, um, especially when you take a look at China, which just launched its second pilot program um, by the PBOC to give, you know, residents digital yuan e effectively. If the U.S. Treasury, if the Fed decided to enter such a pilot program and, and conduct that, then where does that leave U.S. dollar coin or the role of a stable coin? Yeah, I mean, if you look right now, the attention, you know, coming out of the White House with the presidential working group, coming out of the G20, G7, who built, you know, a set of policy recommendations around global stable coins like USDC uh, and the proposed, you know, forthcoming stable coins uh, from Diem. But I think the, the the here and the now is that uh, private sector actors acting in consortium are, are building standards and they're building the rigorous uh, governance that's needed, the technical infrastructure that's needed, the security models, the compliance models. So there's an enormous amount of work happening in the private sector, primarily in the West, uh, to, to build this out as a legitimate market infrastructure. And it's growing really, really fast. Mm -hmm. um, there's research that goes on uh, within uh, you know, government agencies. But I think if you look at the history of electronic money, at least in the West, it is a history of consortiums of private sector actors getting together to build standards and interoperability, whether it's SWIFT, the card networks, uh, ACH networks, and now stable points. So I think the predominant form of, of digital currency, uh, fiat digital currency that we're going to see widely circulating and being used is very likely going to be, you know, driven by these kinds of arrangements. Over the long run, there has to be some harmonization, right? The, the Federal Reserve uh, or the Treasury Department, they want to set supervisory standards. They care about safety and soundness, underlying risk management. And in fact, a lot of the things that have been put forward by the White House last week around mm -hmm. stable points and what they need, these are the kinds of standards that these consortiums uh, are already building. Is Circle's bet effectively that 
Bitcoin will never achieve true functionality in terms of being a transactional digital currency. In order for you to exist, basically, I mean, don't you need Bitcoin to still just be a store of value and not be very easy to use, even though Square and PayPal are, are trying to make it much easier to use? Well, absolutely. I mean, not at all. I mean, we, we're interested in supporting digital currencies that are, are widely used in payments and settlement uh, that are widely used as denominators in financial contracts. I think one of the most significant things that we're seeing, for example, with uh, stable coins is there's the programmable money. This money can be written into software, into contracts that are on the public Internet. There's yield markets, interest rate markets that have built up around them that are governed by machines, not banks. Um, those are really powerful breakthroughs. If you know, if, if the denominator wants to be Bitcoin, that's great. I mean, uh, as a sort of digital currency bank-like institution, uh, you know, we're very open-minded on that. I think in the in the short to medium term, when we think about you know hundreds of millions or billions of people uh, making uh, you know making payments or or financial institutions denominating financial contracts with crypto, which we surely think they will. Um, we think that it's more likely that those, uh, for that period, at least the next uh, several years, are going to be principally in stable coins. Jeremy, thanks for the conversation. Always great to speak with you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.